Hi and welcome to a new and today also a little bit unusual video. So first of all, thanks so much to the University of Heilbronn where I studied mechatronics like uh, three years ago, graduated from there. So yeah, I was there to take pictures with an SEM of an i7 8700K. Also, thanks so much to my Patreon supporters because basically you guys covered the costs of this video. So basically I had to drive 600 kilometers to there and also back and everything. So Patreon covered all those costs. So thanks to all my Patreon supporters. So in here I have the i7-8700K. That's actually the second CPU I had to abuse for this. So to take pictures from the side with an SEM, I had to obviously cut the CPU. So I did that with the first CPU. I basically cut the PCB and then tried to grind it down from the side, which didn't really work out that well because the die cracked. So I had to do a second attempt with the second uh, 8700K. No worries, both CPUs were dead before. So it's not really like I uh, yeah, wasted CPUs for this. So then I had... Uh, the, uh, on the second try I decided to grind down the CPU from the side completely so I just used uh, some sandpaper and then in the end basically diamond polishing film and just grinded it down. It took like over half an hour to get it to this state but basically the CPU has arrived and the corner looks really really good. So before we go over to the scanning electron microscope pictures we will first take a look at the CPU with the normal microscope and now you can see the CPU under the normal microscope with a magnification of about 20 times. So all those parts you can see on the side here are SMD capacitors and then in the middle you can see the PCB itself. You can kind of see the layers in here. We will soon uh, be able to take a nice look at those from the SEM footage and on here on the top you can see the silicon chip and basically from the CPU itself all the transistors we cannot see anything we would have to zoom in a lot and that's what we will do today with the scanning electron microscope footage. So if you're not really familiar with an SEM it's actually quite simple so the main difference is that we're not using normal light we're using electrons to scan the surface of an object. So we have a cathode and the cathode is emitting electrons and we have an electron beam which is getting focused by some magnets and then this electron beam is basically scanning the surface and that's why it's called a scanning electron microscope. The reason why we're using electrons and not normal light is because the wavelength of electrons is so much smaller than of the normal light and that's why we can scan extremely small structures. That's what you usually take for example for scanning insects you can take really really impressive footage from insects but to do that the surface has to be electrically contact conductive so for example for insects we have to coat them first we have to coat them for example with platinum or with gold just a very very thin layer and then we will be able to take a look at the footage Thankfully the CPU is already electrically conductive because we have a lot of copper inside the PCB. We have several different types of metals inside the CPU itself on, on top of the silicon so we don't have to do any um, coating for the CPU itself. However we still have to connect the CPU to the scanning electron microscope and that's why we have this uh, copper tape on here. So basically just put the copper tape onto the CPU and then we can put the CPU inside the SEM. Then we close the SEM and then we have to build up a vacuum in there. And that's basically needed because all the particles that are in the air, I'm not even talking about dust, I'm also talking about the air itself. Everything in there is small particles, are atoms. All of this would be in the way it would block the electron beam. That's why we need an ultra high vacuum inside the scanning electron microscope. And once we did all that, we can take pictures of the CPU. So we will go over to the footage and the first image you can see is 33 times magnified. You can see on the top level, you can see the SMD caps. On the top right corner, you can see one is a bit ripped off. You can see some of the copper traces actually removed from the PC itself, uh, PCB itself. On the left side, you can see an SMD cap that has been cut through. And in the middle, you can see the PCB. You can see all the different layers the PCB consists of. So if, you, if I didn't count wrong, we should have nine layers on this PCB and the PCB itself has a thickness of around 0.8 millimeters. So it's actually quite thin for having nine layers. And the gray thick line on the bottom, that's the silicon. And actually even 33 times magnified with a scanning electron microscope, still we cannot see the actual CPU. We still cannot see anything of it. 
So now 55 times magnified again on top you can see some SMD caps on the left corner uh, top left corner there's again one that's slightly ripped off top right and middle top you can see two SMD caps that have been cut through in the middle we can see the PCB again in the middle of the PCB you can actually see the very tiny glass fibers the PCB consists of and on the bottom of the PCB we have those half round blocks and those blocks are actually connecting the PCB to the CPU itself. Again, on the very bottom, the, the thick gray line, that is the silicon substrate. And on top of this, you have this very tiny, very thin grayish line. And that actually is the CPU. So now zooming in 300 times, again, we can see on top the PCB, we can see the different layers of the CPU. You can also see the result of my grinding work. You can kind of see it on the PCB layers, on the copper layers. On the bottom, we can now finally see a little bit of a structure and that's actually the CPU. And it's so thin that even on 300 times magnification, we still cannot really see anything. So the University of Heilbronn actually has two SEMs. So after the pictures I just showed you, we actually moved over to the second SEM because the quality is a bit better, the interface is a little bit more up to date. So those images are now a bit rotated compared to before. So on the bottom right, you can see again the PCB. Top left, you can see silicon and in basically in the middle, this whole stripe where you can see those small tiny structures. This is what we would call the CPU layers. And on the bottom right you see a scale which shows 50 micrometers and that already shows how tiny actually this small structure is. So the small structure, if we translate it, is around 10 micrometers thick and that's the whole CPU itself. And that's why we have to zoom in even more. So now 4000 times magnified on the bottom right you see the scale with 5 micrometers. That's why you can kind of translate it to the full thickness of around 10 micrometers. So on the bottom right we have the first copper layer and then we have a lot of connection layers and it's getting tinier and tinier. It's actually so tiny that even with this scanning electron microscope we are not able to see a single transistor because they're so extremely small that even with 4000 times magnification you cannot see any of those. So in this image from Wikichip you can see an example of a 14 nanometer tree gate transistor, also a shot from the side and the, the SEM quality you need to take a picture like this is extremely good. So you need an extremely good SEM to take pictures like that if you have to consider that this is actually a single transistor and on 4000 times magnification on this SEM you cannot see anything and that's also related because of all the other electronic parts you have around the SEM, all those have an influence of the electronic beam, of the quality of the electronic beams. You would have to shield the whole SEM to improve the image quality, but, but even then, the resolution of this scanning electron microscope is a maximum of 3.5 nanometers. And considering that the structures you can see in the image of Wikichip, the small width there is 8 nanometers. It would not be possible technically with this SEM to have a resolution to see a single transistor. But I just want you to kind of appreciate how tiny the structure actually is on your CPU. And to show you even more how tiny those things are. So I took the die from my i9-7980XE die shot video. If you didn't see it, just check it out. It's, it should be quite interesting. So I took the die from the 7980XE die shot video and put it under the scanning electron microscope and now on the bottom you see there is a tiny hole inside the die in one of the metal layers and that's where we, where we will zoom in. So this image is 30 times magnified where you can see the small hole and now we will zoom in 650 times. You can already see some of the very tiny structures, something that looks kind of like traces, connecting, connecting layers. I'm not really exactly sure what it is. And now we zoom in 1900 times and now you can kind of see some very tiny structures, some kind of rectangles, some kind of cubes. If we zoom in 7500 times you can see it even more detailed and finally if we zoom in 14,000 times even then you can see how good the quality of those structures are. We have some perfect squares in there which you can see even at a magnification of 14,000 times and to me personally it's really like witchcraft that it's even possible to produce something that tiny. So if you consider that a nowadays CPUs you have probably like two square centimeters die size and we have several billion transistors on there and it's actually absolutely impressive that every single 
one of those transistor, transistors actually work. And also, if you consider how thin this layer is, as I said before, it's around 0.01 millimeter thick, and that's actually your CPU. Actually, that's only, only that is your CPU. Everything above and below is, could be either the silicon, which is the base where you build up the CPU, but then you have the PCB on top. But uh, no matter what, if you consider that the CPU itself is 0.01 millimeter thick and with this tiny layer we are able to produce heat of like several hundred watt while overclocking and everything works, nothing is burning. In my eyes, absolutely impressive. So I hope with this video I could kind of share my excitement for this whole technology. I hope I could give you a little bit more of an insight how a CPU looks inside actually and not when you just have it in your hand with a heat spatter, it's kind of hard to imagine how the CPU actually looks like. So if you liked it, um, leave a thumbs up here. If you have any questions, put it down in the comments. Maybe check out my Instagram channel because sometimes if I don't have that much time to put up videos, I'm still posting a lot there, posting also a bit stuff of my personal life, a bit stuff I'm working on at Casking. Also check out the Patreon page in uh, the description, which really helps me to produce videos like this because it's a lot of work and a lot of costs that goes into this. So thanks again to my Patreon supporters. Have a wonderful Sunday evening. See you soon.